Hello everyone, imagine this. You've got an awesome image to video AI model that can whip up some seriously realistic clips from just a single picture. But whenever you try to tell it exactly how you want stuff to move, like, hey, make this cat jump over here, or pan the camera smoothly like that, it either ignores you completely or you have to spend days fine tuning the model super annoying. Well, today I wanna to talk about this new paper that just dropped and completely fixes that problem. It's called Time to Move, or TTM for short. And the coolest part? It's totally training free. Zero fine tuning, zero extra time, just plug it in and go. Basically, you give it a starting image, plus a super rough motion guide, like literally dragging the object around in a video editor or using a quick depth map trick, and TTM uses this clever thing called dual clock denoising to make the video follow your motion instructions perfectly in the spots you care about, while letting everything else move naturally and look realistic. No weird artifacts, no frozen backgrounds, none of that junk. And get this, it works with any existing video diffusion model out there, whether it's Stable Video Diffusion, Cog Video X, and WAN 2.2. It even beats a bunch of the fancy training required methods in the benchmarks for motion accuracy and overall quality. Oh, and you can change the appearance of stuff at the same time. Like, turn a red balloon blue while it's floating exactly where you want. Way more precise than just typing words into a prompt. This thing feels like a total game changer for anyone making AI videos, animations, or just messing around with generative stuff. Definitely check out the project page and the paper if you want to try it yourself. I'm super excited to play with this. Let's set up this. Okay, so first, let's check out some examples. This workflow is using the WAN Video Wrapper, so make sure you update to the latest version of the WAN Video Wrapper, specifically the one that shows the list here that's currently in the latest version, which supports the Time to Move framework. We're going to use WAN 2.2 as the inference video model here. The model loader, as you can see, is really interesting. We don't need any additional AI models for this time to move framework. You only need models like, for example, the Light X2V and the image to video high noise and low noise models. In here, I'm using the WAN 2.2. As you can see here, I have the WAN 2.2 base model loaded, so either way works. Whichever image to video WAN 2.2 model you prefer, just load it into the high noise and low noise slots here. These are very typical settings for linking up the block swap and LoRa and LoRa. I'm using the image to video Light X2V, updated on October 22nd, a four step Light X2V LoRa. You can use other versions of the Light X2V LoRa, whatever's comfortable for you, whether you want to run it in low sampling steps or not. If you don't want to use a LoRa, you can just disable it. Here, we have the settings for sampling. For sampling, we have total steps set to 6. If you're not using a LoRa, then go back to normal, like 20 or 30 steps, etc. For split steps, it's going to be 50% of the end steps here. So let's say we have 6 steps, then we put 3, which is 50% of the total 6 steps. Here, you'll see the 2 VAE decode, because the high noise model's output isn't a noisy display. It's actually coming from the image we're going to input and the video we're going to input as well. Talking about the input, for this workflow, as you can see, we have the reference image as the first frame of your video. In this example, I'm using one of the existing examples in Time to Move, and right here, you've got a lot of examples. Click into the Examples folder and you'll have plenty of examples to test first. See what you get and how it's actually running before you apply your own input. That'll be more ideal for practical use. So you've got the first frame, the TTM input, and here we've got the video. Now, this video doesn't look like real footage, like someone pouring red wine or something like that into a glass. And of course, that's because this is using an editor to create the motion for the video. So they understand what to generate from this image. Using the first frame, we've got this image showing a glass with some ice and someone's pouring a red colored liquid, maybe wine or juice, into it. So you'll have these animations to tell the AI what happens when those red liquid drops hit. And it'll fill up the glass with that red liquid over the ice and the mass here. This is the part that controls the motion, how the liquid pours down and fills up the glass with its mass. You'll use this to convert the image into motion 
So here are the new custom nodes for adding time to move. We feed these three inputs into the latent, called the time to move latent, so the sampler understands what kind of image embedding it's working with. Then we move forward to sampling. Let's check it out. All the settings here are optimized for 480p. If you're able to run 720p, then go for it. Here, we've got the generated video. The timing for generating this is actually very similar to regular image to video. Just a little bit longer probably because of the extra inputs for motion control, but it works, and it's able to generate a pretty nice animation of pouring some kind of red liquid into the glass. You can see this is coming from the low noise model. We refined some more details for the liquid motion here, and this is the high noise generated video. You see, the liquid isn't really refined yet, it's still kind of pixelated in this first stage. Then, after the high noise model, we use the low noise model to refine those details, making the liquid smoother throughout the whole motion in this video. So it's actually pretty easy to run this workflow in Comfy UI. You don't need any additional stuff or extra models, just image to video. You can think of this as a standard image to video model workflow, except we're inputting three files for our animations. How the image looks, which, of course, in image to video is the fundamental basic input, plus the motion guiding video and the mass controlled motion. It's kind of like control net, but we're not actually using control net in this workflow. Still, it works for image to video. So that's the difference between this and videos that use control net, like WAN 2.1 vase or 2.2 fun vase, which use existing videos as motion controls. Now, how do we create these three inputs based on just one image? If you have one image like this, how can you create the masks for the video and the motion guiding video that this workflow needs? In the official time to move GitHub repo, go to the main page, then into the GUI folder, the graphical user interface folder. You'll find two files there. Grab those two. The README -E has the installation guide and setup instructions for running the Python code. The Python script is the user interface that'll pop up on your local machine, letting you create those three input parameters. The required steps are, first, install the dependencies for the Python code. It's this one line. Basically, most of these components you'll already have if you're running Comfy UI with WAN 2.2 and the WAN video wrapper. But PySlide 6 might not be in your existing system, so you might just copy this command and run it in your setup. In my setup, I'm using the same virtual environment as Comfy UI, which makes things easier. I just keep everything unified in one virtual environment. What I did was download the two files and put them into the Comfy UI folder. So here's the main Comfy UI folder, and I created a guy folder inside it, then dropped those two files right in. That way, cut and drag.py. That's the Python code we need to run the graphical interface for creating our motion signals. The motion signal and the mass are created using this Python code based on your image. So let's say we want to run this code. In my case, I use the same virtual environment as my Comfy UI. So I'd stop the Comfy UI process first. Then, once you're in your CUDA, WSL, or just a Python virtual environment, you'll see the environment name in your command prompt. Once you have that, you can run the first command to install the dependencies, that PIP install command line. I've already installed it, so it won't do anything for me now. But here's what it looked like during installation. Once that's done, you can start the interface by typing python cut and drag.py. Press enter, and it'll pop up this user interface. After that, you won't need to run the PIP install again. Just navigate to the GUI folder and run the Python script. For example, in my setup, I go into the folder and run the Python code to launch the interface. Type the command, press enter, and you'll see it load up. Now we're going from the workflow to the command prompt, executing the Python code, and then into the graphical user interface. Once you're in, you can first select an image, go through all the steps here, and you'll be able to set up your motion signal and mass based on a single image. Let's try this image I generated earlier. It's a cityscape with Superman. Imagine you just generated this image using Quen or whatever image generator you use. After selecting the image, you'll add a polygon. Press this button and you'll see the label switch. Now, use your mouse to place green dots around the object you want to move. 
in this case, Superman. Once you've highlighted the object by creating a polygon around it, press Finish. It'll switch into an image editor mode where you can manipulate the object using the red dot on top. You can rotate it 360 degrees like this or use the corner red dots to resize it, make it bigger or smaller, whatever you need. That's how you use it. Let's go with a very simple example for the first try. In the first frame, let's keep Superman in the same position, right in the middle. We'll add one segment, then, when we drag him to another position, like up here, you'll see a line follow, creating another segment that line guides how the object moves across your total frames. Our total frame count is 81, so keep in mind, if you move too much, it might not produce perfect motion within those 81 frames. So start simple at first. Once you get the hang of it and learn how to handle motion duration, you can try more advanced stuff. The transformation preview here lets you see how the object changes, both in position and color, and you can adjust the size too. For example, if I move him closer to the camera, it'll create a close-up shot. Then I'll end that segment. That creates another line. Now, let's say I want to add another segment. Move him up here and rotate him like this. One limitation for more advanced use, it can't flip objects, no vertical or horizontal flipping, it only allows rotation like this. So let's say I move the object back into the background and make it smaller. That'll create a sense of distance in the final video. I'll rotate it about 90 degrees and end another segment. For the last segment, I'll have Superman fly up into the sky and disappear. Now, in the prompt box, you can type whatever prompt you want for this motion. Since the object is already in the image, it's best to focus the prompt on the motion. You don't really need super detailed descriptions of the outfit, height, etc. Just reference what's already in the image. So let's say I use this prompt here. Now I've finished all three input parts for the workflow. I'll hit save. When you press save, a window pops up. Just save it in your directory. I'll save it in the time to move examples folder alongside all the other examples. There you go. You now have all three input components for your video, plus the prompt I entered saved as well. So the GUI generates four files total. We'll use these as input in the workflow. Just load them into Comfy UI. Since I put them in the input folder, I can press R to refresh the file list. Now I can load the first frame, the motion signal, which always uses the same file name in the input folder, and the mass video. As you can see, the motion signal is playing back the exact motion I recorded in the GUI. Lastly, we use the mass from that generated video. Now this mass video doesn't look great, but that's okay. We'll generate the final video using WAN 2.2 and the new custom nodes here. I'll use the text prompt I wrote which describes the character, outfit, and actions. Then we'll generate and see how it looks. Okay, so here's the generated video. I actually ran it twice. In the first attempt, I used a prompt based on the original Quen VL generated image, describing character outfit and actions. But that prompt didn't really capture the dynamic motion I created manually in the GUI. The AI doesn't understand the motion signal we made, it only sees the first frame and relies on the text prompt. So the actions part of your prompt is really important here. Even though you can describe the character and environment well, language models tend to give pretty generic action descriptions. But since we're creating custom motions in the GUI, we need to customize the prompt to match exactly what we did. In my second attempt, you can see it follows the motion path much better. Let me bring up the motion signal again. This is what I drew in the interface. The second result matches the shot I designed because I customized the text prompt to describe the motion precisely. Character in the middle of flight, flies toward camera for a close-up shot, speeds upward into the sky. I included those keywords so the AI could align the generation with my motion signal. If you just use a general prompt, even if it's grammatically perfect and reads like a nice paragraph, the AI won't connect it to your custom motion. So even if someone says your prompt is too simple or not grammatically correct, it doesn't really matter. Neural networks care more about keywords that trigger the right motions. That's the key. Customize your prompt to match your motion signal, just like you would with ControlNet. Here's another demo. I added polygons and drew paths for two people skateboarding. Let's play the demo. And yeah, 
you can see both characters follow different paths and transition smoothly. In the original image, this person is in front, but eventually, they move into the background, creating distance between the two skiers. The other skier comes from the right, jumps off the platform, and by the end, the focus shifts from a close-up of the female skier to a wide shot of the whole playground. You can do a lot creatively, you just need to be thoughtful about how you set your polygons and move your objects over time. But there weren't enough frames to complete the animation, it just stops mid-air. So you'll need to adjust your frame count based on your action. And yes, you can change that in the GUI. Go back to the GitHub repo, you'll see a total frames setting. Adjust it if you need a slightly longer clip, but not too long. For actions like this, it's acceptable. It looks pretty cool and fun. This time to move framework gives you a new way to generate image to video with more dynamic, controllable actions. You're not just gambling with text prompts and hoping for the best, you actually get to direct the motion. I'll see you guys in the next one. Have a nice day. See ya.